<clears throat> Sorry for taking so long here. This little song's been on my heart. <clears throat> we was raised without very much money, and I didn't know it. I was just a little boy, and uh, the old house mom and dad still lives in, or dad and mom lives in. Dad's living in a good house now. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, uh, you know, pretty much mom says it's the termites is holding hands while it's keeping the floor from falling in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one time I had a friend of mine come home with us and you know I didn't know we lived poor and a friend of mine came from uh, you know a different different background sort of and uh, he said something to me kind of hurt my feelings about you know the way we lived, way, the way the house was there and, but I really didn't pay any attention to it I didn't know we were poor we was happy we had the Lord in our heart but anyway, I'm going to sing a song about, about this old house. I think it's right, Key. This old house of mine ain't pretty. It's decaying every day. <clears throat> Let me try a different key. This old house of mine ain't pretty. It's decaying more each day. The roof could use some fixing And the paint is falling away Oh, but when you look at it, my friend Don't feel sorry for me My whole house ain't much to look at But my home's a sight to see My home sits by crystal stream on the street of gold nothing down here can compare to its beauty i've been told it will never need repairing it will last eternally my old house ain't much to look at but my home's a sight to see <laughs> All the houses on this earth Are made from the clay The winds of time blows on them And their beauty fades away But my home is not of this world It was bought at Calvary my old house ain't much to look at, but my home's a sight to see. My home sits by a crystal stream on a street of gold. Nothing down here can compare to its beauty, I've been told. It will never need repairing It will last eternally My old house ain't much to look at But my home's a sight to see Amen. Amen. Good. A good amen. Praise God for that. The old house down there ain't much to look at. But I'm proud you told about, about that. I've I've seen some houses, you know, pretty butchered up down here, seemed like pretty bad shape. And I didn't know what was holding them together. You know, now I'm termites holding hands. I never heard nothing like that over here. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, the Lord's good and wonderful. And it's going to get better. Yep. When we get over there, the place he's a singing about. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just cannot imagine what's awaiting the children of God. No. I have not seen, here's our, neither has the heart of man the thing which God's prepared for them to love Him. Amen. I want to love Him more and more. Is you know, singing that song? I want right. to love Him more every day. Yeah. It's my prayer to love the Lord a little bit more every day. Turn to Bible, Galatians chapter 6. For our scripture reading, just one thing about these few of these verses right here, last day or two, and, and uh, just want to 
Got maybe a few little notes on one of these church things. <laughs> and, uh, church bull, that's what that is. And uh, I'll read a few verses here and talk to you in a little while. It won't be long. Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken and fall, you which are spiritual, restore such a one the spirit of meat, and consider thyself also, lest thou also be tempted. Bear you one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate to him that teaches him all good things. Be not deceived, God's not moth. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall have his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall have the spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to preach on them verses tonight. Most of the time I read that scripture, that's what you think I'm going to preach. Verse 9. And let us not be weary and well do it. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, and especially unto them who are the household of faith. Notice that verse. As we have therefore opportunity, <clears throat> let us do good yep. unto all men, right. but especially yep. <clears throat> unto them that's the household of faith. Now, I'll talk a little bit about uh, tonight about uh, doing good. Just them two words. Doing good. Amen. Now I know what you're thinking that uh, the Bible said there's none good, no not one. I understand that. But that's not a line I'm talking about. That's not a line I'm going to talk about. Tonight. Doing good. Doing good. Bible said in Jeremiah, Thus saith the Lord, send the way and see and ask for the old path. Where's a good way? There's that word again. Where's a good way? And walk there in and said, you'll find rest for your soul. And I'm proud I'm in the good way. Yeah. And there's no substitute for the good way. Nope. The Bible way, the old-fashioned way. That's right. And I thought about, when I thought about doing good, I thought about over where Peter was, uh, uh, preached the first message of the Gentile world. In Acts 10, all of you read the Bible know about that. And when he got down to almost the last of the chapter, and he said, uh, talking about the resurrection, and he said, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good. Amen. Well, after all, he's our example. And if Jesus went about doing good, why not uh, us? Why don't we try doing good a little bit? <laughs> we'll see what. Bible said, oh, taste and see that the Lord's good. Amen. And he is good. Yes, sir. But you'll never know till you taste for yourself. Right. Jesus went home with Martha and Mary one time and Martha was serving, working hard and everything, and sat a sister named Mary, sat at Jesus' feet, and, uh, and uh, they came to Jesus and tell him about it, and he said, uh, Mary's chosen the good part. Yeah. The good part yep. that will not be taken away from her. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Yes. It's cold waters to a thirsty soul. So it's good news from a far country. Amen. And we all like good news, don't we? Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about verse 10 and about verse 1, about two, maybe three verses, that's all I want to talk about. But look at verse 10 again. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, but especially to them that saw the household of faith. You say, what does that mean? Well, normally when you talk about a, a household, you think about a family. Is that not right? Household. You think about families. 
And it talks here about the household of faith. And so that's a church family. That's a family of God. And we're, we, we're members of that family. We belong to that family if we're saved. If we're saved, born in the family of God. And then uh, we're the household of faith. So it said we're especially supposed to do good to the household of faith. There's an old saying, charity begins at home. I don't know if that's right or not. And, and it might just be a saying, don't guess it's scripture. But uh, at least uh, we're supposed to take care of our own first. I believe that in hell. Right. And so uh, the household of faith, the church, our church family, and we're supposed to do good. Every time we have opportunity to do good to one another, we're supposed to be good to one another. Right. Not cut throats, not talk about one another, right. not push somebody down and, you know, if you get them down far enough, step on them or nothing like that. I mean, we're supposed to do good to each other. Right. The household of faith. Yes. May the Lord help us to see that and know that. The Bible said, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And then it said in verse 20, that's Corinthians 12, verse 26 said, when one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Yes, sir. And then one member be honored, all the members rejoice together. That's the kind of love that we're supposed to have for each other. That's the kind of unity and the fellowship that a real church is supposed to have one with another. When one's happy, others is happy. In order to make up, if, if the Lord's blessed somebody with something special and, and uh, they're happy about it, we ought to get happy with them. Amen. Amen. Ain't, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. And somebody's suffering, we ought to get out there and suffer with them, help them. It's the same scripture said by one of those birds yeah. that I read a while ago. But the Bible said, Love working no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is a fulfillment of the law. In fact, it even said, If your enemy hunger, feed him. Much less a church family. If your enemy hungry, if you thirst, give him drink. And so doing to leap coals of fire, coals of fire's head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I like this word. I used to quote this to my wife a whole lot. First John three eighteen. My little children. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the children of God, people of God. It said, "My little children." Let us love not in word and in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's one thing to love in word and tongue, but it's another thing to love in deed Amen. and in truth. Yeah, right. That's putting it in action. That's doing something. That's doing good. Not just talking, but doing good. I'll give you a little example of what I'm trying to say. Brother Al, Brother Al done us a good deed the other day. Most half y'all don't know about this, I don't guess you know. About but I came out here last Wednesday and cranked that van up to move it out of the way. And uh, that time it cranked, it shot, or backfired I guess would be the word. And uh, Lord, it didn't sound like a van running, it sounded like a sawmill. I don't know what in the world happened. So I just backed it off out there out of the way. We got to church and told Brother Al about it. And he went, I'll go look at it. So he went there and looked at it. And he come back and said, you know what's wrong with that van? He said, somebody has got in there and sawed that, uh, what do you call it? Cadillac converter. Somebody got in there and sawed them pipes in two and stole that Cadillac converter off that van. And said, that's where it's going so loud. And that church asked him about it. He said, I'll fix it. And so he drove it over to his house and welded a new pipe on there and fixed it. Brought it back Sunday. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get my point over. That was a good deed. Yeah, that was a good deed. Now I know that didn't mean, probably didn't mean nothing to most of y'all. Sure didn't mean a lot to me. Amen. And uh, yes. and uh, so I appreciate them doing that for. I appreciate everything people does. Little th we call them little things, but uh, if you can't do it yourself and somebody else can do it, it becomes a big thing. Right. <laughs> to me. <laughs> and uh, so uh, 
Just do a good deed for somebody. In fact, the Bible said, be not hearers, you know, hearers of the word, not doers. If any man be a hearer of the word, not doer. He's like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. He looks at himself and, and uh, then he goes his way and forgets what it looks like. If you don't continue in the word of God. And I think that's what happens to us sometimes. I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about doing, doing good, doing good. To them that's household of faith. Them that's household of faith. Do good. Do good. Do good. In fact, uh, Corinthians 13, yeah. It said, uh, he said, though I speak with tongues of men of angels, how not charity? I'm just like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Though I give my body to be burned, how not charity? Prop me nothing. And destroy all my goods to feed the poor and all this stuff. And and have not charity instead of nothing. And uh, charity is suffering long. It's kind. That's what it said. Amen. And it said charity beareth all things, doeth all things, hopeth all things, and all these many things. And so uh, that's love and action. What charity is love and action. And so what we need to do is try to put it in action, put it in shoe leather. And do good, do good. And now we'll look at verse 1. As we look at verse 10, look at verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken to fall, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And uh, when a brother falls, we ought not push him down further, but we ought to try to pick him up and get him going again. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. He said, you what you're spiritual. Right. I said one time when I was preaching, big way of preaching, I said that disqualifies 90% of the people. When uh, it does, almost, I don't know whether it's 90%, but a whole lot of you what you're spiritual were stolen. Spiritual. Sometimes some of them old carnal Christians that you know, they just, they want to find out more about it where they can gossip. Amen. I'm, I'm gonna be sweet. I ain't talking about that tonight, but, uh, but that is true. But I tell you, people's out there hurt sometimes. You know, they're down. They need somebody to lift them up. Down and out. You use the term the down and out. And that's when people need help when they're down and out and need, uh, need somebody to say a kind word to them or do, be, a, be a friend to them. When they need a friend, we ought to try to be friends to them. It's falling away. I'm not talking about being partaker of their sin and doing what they're doing. I'm not talking about that. You're right, preacher. But we'll all try to help them. Yes, sir. We'll all try to help them. We never know it could happen to us sometimes. Well, you say it won't happen to me. It's happened to better people than most of us. <laughs> and uh, so it could happen. It could happen. And so, brother, if a man be overtaken in the fall, after all, the Bible said in Romans 15, you are strong. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves. Now, if a brother falls, that's a pretty good sign. If we're still going for God, it's a pretty good sign we're supposed to be a little stronger than them. Is that right? That's just pretty common sense right there. And so if they've been overtaken that fall and we're still going for God, we ought to be strong, so therefore we'll try to help them along the way. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves. I'm going to hurry up a little bit. I, but I want to say a word about this. I thought about that man that, uh, you know, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. I'm talking about help, helping them that's, helping them that's uh, fall, them that's in sin, them that's uh, fell by the wayside. I guess sometimes we use them terms, fall by the wayside. And uh, you never know, they just, they just might be waiting on somebody to kind of give them a little lift and a little push. Get going for God, going for God again. But that man that left Jerusalem went down to Jericho. Jerusalem, place of worship. You've heard that preached all your life, and I preached it most of my life. But Jerusalem, place of worship. And when people drops out of church, there's just one way to go. 
And that's down. He left Jerusalem and went down to Jericho. And the Bible said he fell among the thieves. They stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, departed, left him half dead. And that's what the devil wants to do. Everybody save him for God. He wants to get us in trouble. Priests came by, about like we are sometimes. Levi came by, about like we are sometimes. They looked, passed by on the other side. Are we not guilty of that? Just looking on, passing on. But a certain Samaritan as he journey came where he was. Bound up his wound, poured in oil, wine, put it on his beast, carried it in, took care of it. And uh, that's exactly what the Lord done for us when he saved us. And uh, he had compassion on us, love for us, gave himself for us, and we ought to be willing to lend somebody else a hip and hand and help them along the way. May the Lord help us to do that. Amen. And I want to say, talk a little bit about the, the household of God and the household of faith. And uh, then a little bit about the, the, the once fell by the wayside, I guess would be the word. I want to say a word about the sinner. And uh, just a few words and I'll be done here. I want to think about this. I thought about that. Uh, I thought about uh, that. Uh, Man had been in Jerusalem to worship. This is Acts chapter 8. And he'd been up to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning his chariot, reading the prophet Isaiah. He said, Oh, this man, he, he must have been saved in Jerusalem to worship. No, he was, he was a lost man. He'd been to Jerusalem. He went up there far to worship, the Bible said. But he was going back home the same way he went. And he hadn't changed a bit when he got up there. And uh, so, uh, he, he was blind. He asked, here's what he asked Philip. Now Philip asked him. He said, you understand what you read? Then he said, how can I? Except some man guide me. Somebody, somebody has got to show him the way. Oh, he said the church is on every corner. And uh, people don't know how to get saved live around this part. They ought to, but a lot of them don't. They really don't. The Bible said, In whom the God of this world blind the minds of them which believe not. And the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, they are foolish unto them, neither can he know them because they are spirit to discern. On and on. And Paul said, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for his that they might be saved. And uh, they had a religion. He goes on to tell us in that chapter how, but how religious they were, but they didn't know the Lord. And sinners, sinners is blind. They are helpless. They're depraved, so they need somebody to help them. Amen. So many examples in the Bible, and we can go on, but I'm going to take time to do that. But I just want to tell you where you can read in, in, in Luke chapter 18, to close the chapter just before we got over where Zacchaeus was. And uh, Jesus passed by that blind man, heard the noise, he started crying. I don't know what it meant, they told him. He started crying, Jesus, Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on him. They brought him to Jesus, and he said, what do you want me to do? He said, Lord, I might receive my sight. Jesus touched him, he received his sight, and he followed him, glorifying God. But he didn't follow him. They brought him to Jesus, and Jesus touched his eyes. He was blind. He was blind. He didn't know how to get to Jesus. And then I said, they're helpless. They were. Luke chapter, no, Mark chapter four, 2. I think I'm right about that. Mark chapter 2. And... Uh, the Bible said this man had the palace and he was born a fool. Four men got him and his bed or whatever his own, couch or whatever his own, and uh, carried him to Jesus and pulled the roof off and let him down where Jesus was. Why'd they carry him? He couldn't get there by himself. That's right. Amen. He couldn't get there. He had to have somebody to help him. Get there. Sinners are helped. They do pray. They can't say they're saved. Sing that song. I can't, but I know a man who can. And we can't save him, but we know somebody can. Right. Yep. We just need to tell them about it. Yes, need to be a faithful witness and tell them about that. Amen. Well, Preacher. as we have therefore opportunity to let us do good to all men, especially them as a household of faith. Brother, a man be overtaken and follow you with your spirits, or store souls for the spirit of meat, and consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. 
And then the sinners out there need God. And we ought to try to reach the ones we can. Time's running out. When we long for the Lord will be back. And uh, time's running out. And may the Lord help us to be busy trying to reach people for the Lord. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us come here this Wednesday night and join the fellowship and house of the Lord again. And I just thank you, Lord, for your word and thank you for the good songs and fellowship we've enjoyed this meeting tonight. I pray you let us meet together on Wednesday night and, and it gets strength for our soul to go on and live for God and love you and serve you. Pray for everybody in this building. Oh, God, help us. Help us all that we'll see the need of helping each other. Helping each other. The Bible said we're laborers together with God. And that's what we want to do, Lord, here at this church. We want to labor together with God. And I pray you'll help us to do that. And then this fell by the wayside, Lord, that somehow we'll do something to help somebody. Somebody get back on track again, live for God, stay with God, and do right, live right, and sinners will get saved. Thank you again for the church and all the blessing and many prayers you've asked. Now we'll, we'll forget to ask you to bless all our missionaries and take care of them, whatever they have and what they need. And then all of our sick, please touch all our sick folk. And I'm proud some's better. And uh, you've answered many prayers, and I appreciate that. And I just pray your will be done in all of our hearts and life. Every day. Not just when we're church, but Lord, we need you every day. We can't. We just can't walk without you holding our hand, Lord. And what you do for us, we love you and thank you. Meet with the Son. It may be a great day in the Lord's house if you let us live to the end. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming.